Good day, Ray. Hello, how are you? Pretty good, you? Pretty good. Is my audio coming through well enough? Yes. Thanks. Hey, Brandon, Matt, Dan. Hello. Morning, Matthew. Hello. Brendan, do you are you aware of the tracking issue that where we said we would go through five um, assessments before we made it official? Yeah, uh, let me off let the me top of your head. Um, mm, let me put that up. Give me a second. Awesome. Do that. No rush. By the way, I know, um, and Matthew, thanks so much for, for helping to facilitate the meetings. Um, if you want to take a break from it, I can um, facilitate some meetings as well, if you'd like. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, I'm happy to continue to do so, so long as it's, uh, they're helpful when they're getting something done. If we feel it'd be better to sort of rotate it just so people see uh, more than one face all the time, I'm happy to do that too. We'll just rotate every week or flip a coin at random based on uh, who's free and that that works fine by me either which way i'd love to see um you know someone else besides just myself um come through and kind of ratify some of the facilitation process that you put in place so uh i, I think that's a you know it, it's, it's great to continue on uh i'd love to you know see um you know brandon or, or someone else uh you know come in go through the process uh get feedback and kind of uh do some some better work there maybe uh um i can prioritize this week now that we've got harbor out the door um landing the facilitator guidelines and um we can uh you know choose a meeting in the future that uh, um I mean, brandon it's a good time for brandon I should put together the facilitator guidelines. I recall now it meant to put together a pull request and put that in the documentation. Still haven't done it. Um, actually, Deal. one thing that supplement that, Dan. Uh, so, for mm. example, I, for more an embedded security background and a bit of pen testing, that sort of stuff, if someone were to, say, do more than, say, facilitating, but be able to provide some answers to the actual real questions, um, are there different meetings or leadership meetings or just reviews one should take part in so that rather than guide, you know, the facilitator will guide the meeting by a sort of a formula, actually have concrete answers to actual security slash leadership questions. Uh, what does one do? Take part in security reviews, um, join some additional separate meetings that are disjoint from this, or what's the way forward with that? Mm -hmm. So there, there are three other sort of primary workflows. Um, the the co-chairs meet regularly um when everybody's healthy and available um we usually have uh, a weekly cadence and we'll meet uh either uh sunday evening or, or monday uh evening uh and sort of coordinate uh at a high level and and work uh towards any um of our sort of uh longer term goals um then the co-chairs and the tech leads uh, just started last Wednesday a biweekly meeting of um, uh, amongst ourselves, uh, and then there are the uh, um, individual assessment flows. Um, the uh, formalization of our tech leads is 
um, you know, something that, that just recently happened. Uh, so I, I think what the opportunity, um, you know, to sort of a- expand from, you know, those sort of existing pillars uh, towards, uh, you know, new activity streams would be um, if any of the chairs or the tech leads wanted to, you know, uh, set up a, a, a breakout. Um, and, you know, Brent is probably the, 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 the best person to, to partner with on this and maybe go through, uh, do some issue triage uh, and, you know, work on that. Um, you know, that, that, that's an area of, of need. There's no formal uh, definition around that yet. It, it's, it's largely been, um, you know, the tech lead stepping in and, um, you know, uh, taking care of it and, and you know, the, the co-chairs you know, ratifying things and, and uh, proposing things. So, um, you know, that's kind of the landscape. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's always great to, uh, you know, get more um, help and, and, you know, the, the, the you know, CNCF, chop wood, carry water. Um, yeah, that's a great opportunity right there. Could I reach out to you? you specifically or Brandon, for example, I was thinking I could just reach out via Slack after this meeting. And it, it, this resonates with the question another uh, attendee had just the other week. And that was uh, how do we sort of join in, like for example, on a review, even if we're just an observer, so that way we can sort of learn it the first time and not ask silly questions or slow down other people by treating it like an academic training exercise rather than what it is a security review. So yeah. um, in the context of meetings, um, should I just reach out via Slack and take it from there? Just to get like the meeting invites, uh, which ones are appropriate for me to join, that sort of thing? Yeah, I, w- I would say also like, <clears throat> I-, I feel like uh, we initially started kind of, um, the initial idea was most of the communication would be in the issues themselves, but it seems like over the course of, the past year, there seems to be like a huge explosion of the number of issues. Um, so it's right. become a bit <laughs> difficult to track. I mean, a ton of people have different ideas and stuff like that. So, so yeah, maybe it sounds like like um, like we can do some um, maybe have a label on certain assessments. Um, yeah, and and you know, Brandon, just riffing on uh, our last. Uh, you know, tech leads and co-chair uh, meeting, there's definitely a, a, an opportunity right now to you know, sort of ramp up our coordination with uh, Amy and, uh, you know, the CNCF team. Um, and, you know, that, that area, uh, you know, above and beyond, you know, just, just working out of issues, but, uh, uh, you know, tracing the issues, uh, issues that are outside of the, uh, you know, SIG security repo, um, and, uh, you know, building, uh, a bit more, um, shared understanding and, and, and maybe a little bit of process around how we coordinate there. Um, you know, it's a, it's an open opportunity that, that I, I feel like we're, uh, iterating towards that, but we, we definitely don't, don't have, um, you know, sort of shared understanding of, uh, um, you know, how, how, how it works and how it should work moving forward gotcha well at the very least i'll definitely be reaching out to both of you via slack afterwards to tee up again all right so i think we awesome. have enough time for everyone to hop on board we've got critical mass i'm just going to quickly go through the attendance and i'll just paste the attendance link here in the chat in case people that joined after i first pasted it did not see it but there you can go in and put your name and there's instructions above if there are any new attendees that haven't been on one of these calls before, uh, you please feel free to just put that in brackets beside your name and later on we'll open up a window for new attendees to introduce themselves. Okay, in terms of what we have here, ah, I, you know what, I'll go through the new attendees at the end just because I see a lot of names popping up here. Uh, we'll go through SIGs first. Uh, actually first, I don't know why I always delay this each time, scribes. Um, is there anyone that would like to volunteer to be scribes or uh, meeting minute takers for today? Uh, I think there's a uh, um, update from a few people. Agreed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to go with the uh, Wallace Luffer since there's a SIG recommendation there and then just go through the rest uh, 
in the order in which I see them. Okay. Oh, okay, uh, so just uh, oh, sorry, please go ahead. So yesterday at the TOC meeting, it kind of uh, changed a lot because there was a new sandbox proposal, uh, which is kind of like another matter. And so I'm bringing it up partially because I have staked this because I proposed Kickhawk. Uh, I want to kind of like take a sound uh, aside the new sandbox proposal because okay let's assume for the uh, for 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 this proposal that I change submission of kickoff from sandbox to incubation and then the change of the process doesn't apply but in general there is this requirement or, or strong suggest suggestion to obtain a recommendation from six when you apply to CNCF uh I, I know the struggle because uh, like six security you, there is a there is a certain bandwidth limitation to the proper project assessments and you do need to prioritize currency instead of projects while there is a steady flow of the requests on top of that so it's pretty much hard to uh do a proper assessment for anyone asking because they want to be considered for cncf which is kind of where Kicklog has been. So uh, I kind of wonder, like, what does the SIG recommendation for TOC really mean? Is it mean because I made like a proper security assessment for Kicklog uh, uh, request with all the write up and so on, but at the same time, there is nothing written there that that's that's exactly what is meant. And so I know it's. Bandwidth wise, it's hard to expect six security right now to do a proper assessment. Uh, at the same time, you know, being realistic, is there any process towards actually having the recommendation and some software review or not? So I'm kind of both asking for myself and stating the problem in, in general. Like it, it's not only about right. people, but it would be good for, for me to have a, a, an answer. Right. So you know, let, let me separate uh, a bit the um, you know the sandbox proposal changes um, and key cloak. Um, you know, key cloak, uh, Dex, uh, and a couple other projects are in our queue. Um, you know, I've unfortunately you know, um, both of my co-chairs, uh, Sarah Allen, uh, is sick, and um, JJ is stuck in India. Um, so, you know, kind of at the, the, the top of the food chain, uh, I have a bit of a, um, you know, kind of leadership and bandwidth, uh, organizational, uh, challenge right now. So, uh, getting through that, that, uh, and I apologize, uh, you know, for, uh, any delays that, that, that's, uh, created on your end. Um, you know, uh, Brandon was, was, uh, um you know with, with the new proposal uh you know proposing that we uh you know potentially lighten up uh how we uh approach uh the folks going into uh sandbox and you know make that um you know much more of a, a self assessment uh you know less of a a guided process um we have you know kind of one core um, you know, well-oiled process with uh, the security assessment, which is a different uh, workflow, different uh, concept than, uh, you know, what you'll get with uh, a formal security organization. Uh, we're not going through and uh, going to provide you with, um, you know, penetration tests and, and uh, you know, all of the artifacts that you would get from, um, you know, paid, you know, $20,000, uh, investment into, you know, getting a proper security assessment. Um, you know, what we provide is, you know, in a community of, uh, of experts, uh, we help you prepare in your journey, uh, through the CNCF, uh, to, you know, sort of partner, coordinate with all the other projects and, uh, you know, make sure that you have, uh, clear talking points and coordination points around your uh, your security uh, parameters. So um, it's a bit, you know, our our, our security assessment is a bit of a different beast, uh, you know, that that has um, 
you know, a similarly, uh, you know, named, uh, named, uh, you know, referring to it. Um, but, uh, you know, having, having gone through and, uh, you know, work with, uh, you know, a number of projects, including, um, you know, security projects, everyone's come through the, the, uh, um, security assessment journey and been like, wow, that was uh, a journey, uh, but also, you know, uh, feeling way more prepared to, uh, you know, address all of all of the concerns. So, um, you know, that that's uh, yeah, that's that's my high level thoughts on that. Um, you know, the my blocker right now is you know really scheduling and uh you know getting y'all into the you know the hopper and once we once we start the process um you know it's it's fairly um it's well it's very labor intensive but uh um you know we we do have a um a well established process that uh you know will guide you through and uh, a number of um, team members that, that you know, are happy to sort of step in. So you're, yeah, you're data uh, at the top right now. I, I guess that was not my question. So I, I do mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. the current, I was looking at the current assessment process and I, I did the proper application. I was looking at the previous ones. So I, I do understand the, the uh, difference between assessment and the audit mm -hmm. and you know, kind of like what's the security approach here. Uh, and I think that's that's a good approach. My question is, okay, say, a project applies to incubation. Let's not mess up with Sandbox right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and TOC wants, okay, uh, we want six security recommendation for this project. Uh, does recommendation from six security actually involves making a proper security assessment according to secure, secure, six security assessment process or is a review for recommendation a lighter one? So um, by default, uh it's it's a it's an assessment um you know you would have to really convince one of the chairs that um one we have uh sufficient context to uh you know accurately and fully um you know uh communicate due diligence uh and uh you know so uh you know, the, the assessment process really serves as our indoctrination and, um, you know, the, the best way that we uh, currently have to uh, work with you and, and, and distribute, um, you know, workload and come to a, a, a shared understanding and decision. Yeah, I want to add one more thing to this, um, which is that uh, really... Justin Capos, technically. Yes, um, uh, <laughs> Zoom is having a lot of problems as I've been complaining about on the security and tech lead source. So hopefully we can move to different conferencing in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, um, the, um, the thing I was going to say is, is that oftentimes the project gets a lot out of the assessment by going through the process with us, which can in some cases be things that we don't necessarily point out. So it's almost like, um, you know, you, you hear of the people that say, well, I went to the psychologist and they didn't really help me. All they did was have me talk and then I helped myself. And, you know, um, so there is an aspect of that to it, too, where it's something where um, the process of you going through a process about reasoning about the things you have to to give us that information has in many cases caused projects to find serious security issues in things they're doing. Yep. I, just to clear out, uh, yeah, I, I, I totally recognize it. And like, even without getting to CNCF, I would love to get your assessment, uh, well, assessment from six security for the project. So I'm not quite, I, I see all the values. What I'm raising is purely a process or bandwidth issue. So my concern is essentially falling in catch 22 situation where to move forward with incubation process, let's say. I'm being asked by TOC to get a recommendation from SIG Security, which is a SIG Security assessment. But then SIG Security having a bandwidth capabilities like it has, uh, will struggle to actually pro process the assessment because there will be more 
priority, higher priority project in the queue. I know current situation is special with, with COVID, no, no, no deny, like we, we just need to go past that. But in general, like, you know, when few projects apply while you still have a backlog of other CNCF projects, which are higher importance, wouldn't it not put the new projects in a blocked position? If we run into that situation, then that's a situation that we'll have to deal with. We're not in that situation now for sure. Um, we had um, uh, Harbor come along. I think they were the most recent project to do a self-assessment. And they just powered through and completed everything. And you know, we did an assessment of them in uh, quite quick order. The uh, projects that you might see in a queue if you look online, a lot of those projects are, have had situations where, for instance, they were very actively doing things and then you know, COVID hit and everybody started to do social distancing and the person who was working on it all of a sudden had different priorities and basically said like, hey, from the project side, we can't do anything. Um, I'm not aware of a project that is like waiting on us to do anything at this point. Um, so I think that was like, so, so Kiko, uh, initially we started this process and then there was a, there was this, um, change in um, the TOC's view on Keycloak initially as a sandbox. So I think we had a team together, then we decided to move the focus to, I think it was like um, uh, Spiffy Spire or Cloud Custodian or something like that. Right. And but that, was, that was TOC directed. Yeah, but then I think the, the thing was now with, there was kind of like an influx of new projects and then there was it wasn't quite clear, at least um, to me, um, which projects were requested by the TOC to be reviewed by us. So I think there was kind of like a bit of miscommunication or at least like delayed communication around that. Um, yeah, well, I, I, think, I, I think you answered my question, you know, I. I applied, uh, I created the PR, uh, the, the submission I think a month ago with the whole self-assessment write-up. I'm not complaining because I, I, I know the current struggles. So, you know, I, I'll patiently wait. Uh, I know it's a bit exceptional, but yeah, just, just kind of like raising the concern, uh, is it the proper approach? But, okay. So with the new process is- okay, And absolutely ping, ping us, ping me on, on Slack. Uh, Add, add something to the issue itself. If, if you're waiting on us and the TOC has approved it, then that's our fault. But my, my understanding is that that generally isn't the case. Yeah, there is a bit of, uh, you know, I, there's, I, I recognize there's a bit of uncertainty. Uh, like, are you supposed to come to COC with recommendation? Or do I need to come to TOC and one of, I need to have like at least one sponsor and then this sponsor, sponsor needs to go to you kind of like, okay, please take a look at, at this project. If that's the case that, yeah, I, maybe I should take a step back and get someone from TOC to reapproach you that, you know, Kikok should be investigated. Because I, I kind of like went all in, I created issue there, I created, well, I created request there and I created request with six security. So maybe that's the miscommunication and misunderstanding. All good. Um, you know, just sort of in the interest of, uh, you know, looking toward the, the, you know, the future, um, you know, the, uh, in, in the next month, uh, you know, how, how is your schedule and your team schedule, um, looking you know, Does it look like, uh, you know, the, there's an opportunity, uh, opportunity to work through the uh, uh, assessment process. Yeah, if we I can, can, can schedule you up, I can provide those. Cool. Great. Well, I I have to you know triage uh, you know uh, key cloak decks and I think one more project uh, in terms of uh, you know what we begin to slot in. And you know, honestly, showing up uh, at meetings and you know, advocating for um, your project and you know, beginning to coordinate with 
our assessment leaders is the best way for me to, uh, you know, to push that forward. So, you know, thank you for showing up. Thank you for, uh, you know, sharing your experience and your concerns. And, um, you know, I'll, 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 I'll try to get that uh, unblocked. And, um, you know, beyond that, also uh, be working with Amy to, to make sure that we're, um, you know, working out the kinks in this new pivot towards, uh, you know, making sure that the, the things uh, are, you know, since we're, um, you know, critical path now, um, you know, I, I, I need to make sure that we're, um, you know, aligning and communicating on, on the, those coordination points a bit more. Thanks. I appreciate it. You bet. Okay. Thank you, Bolesla. We'll move on to the next attendee with an update here, and I believe that's Brandon. Good day, Brandon, again. Hey, yeah, uh, what I want to talk about is kind of, we already kind of talked about it. Um, but I created a PR to, to um, put on the README page some indication of how do I go about submitting a request for um, SIG review. But given that things have changed over the past two days, um, I think I probably have to review it then and then we have to discuss it to, to really figure out what we want that process to be. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. I, I'd also like to say that if if we are moving ahead with Key Cloak, um, now that I'm like I see the issue, I'm looking at the issue here. Um, we desperately need uh, folks to volunteer to be security reviewers for Key Cloak. So. Um, I will post the issue in our Slack right now, in our Slack channel, but um, I would greatly appreciate people reaching out and saying, yes, I can participate uh, in this. Um, you don't have to have done an assessment before to participate, but if you uh, might be tapped for, to be the lead security reviewer, then you would have had to have done a, a prior assessment. Um, so, uh, you know, please volunteer. It's a good way to get some experience uh, doing something, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, is, is obviously a, a really important part of our community and a really part, important part of judging the security of, of products and projects everywhere. If the opportunity permits, could you please copy paste a hot link uh, from Slack into the Zoom chat here, just so if people want to go straight to the Let's say if you start a new thread on it, get a hot link to the thread, people can jump onto that uh, from a link in the chat. Awesome. I can't. Appreciate it. Else can. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm called in, unfortunately. Okay, I believe I, I see one there. I believe Krishan Sharma provided one. Thank you, Krishan. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm also trying to log in and trying to contribute, so would be a Good first step for me as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. In that case, I'll move on to the next item. Let's see, Brandon, no update, no update, no update. Uh, we have Justin Capos. Were you able to get in through Zoom or did they uh, blacklist you for number 376? Uh, I don't really know what the what the problem is. Honestly, I, I registered like Zoom sucks as my username and some other things like that. But um, this same ID and everything works on every uh, other Zoom call I get randomly invited to, which I get invited to them, uh, I don't know, a couple times a, a day. Um, so I don't really know why, but for the last two weeks, I've been unable to dial in. Um, I am not installing and have never installed and will not install the Zoom client due to all the security issues and oversight they've had. Um, and the error message seems to indicate there's some problem with the client, which is strange because it's obviously not installed. Um, so I don't know what's going on, but uh, I would, I had brought up the issue weeks ago um, and there'd been a lot of, I think, positive mentions that we should maybe move away from Zoom. And I'd like to just um, renew that now that I am able to actually in some limited form be able to call in, but it's unfortunate not being able to see who's speaking uh, or any, you know, or things like that, uh, which I, I feel is a big hindrance. Right. 
Um, I was going to have one. Amy, have you first had? Uh, sorry about that. Matthew. Um, Amy, have you had to reconfigure any of the sort of convenience links? Nope, uh, you all are exactly things? as you were. Um, so I'm not really sure why <laughs> that's actually going on. But um, I see questions in chat about alternatives to Zoom. So happy to be able to hear. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, um, you know, getting getting to the alternative and working through all the issues, uh, you know, I'm happy to have that be, you know, longer running um, you know, workflow. Um, you know, the, the, easiest, you know, the easiest uh, sort of incremental uh, move right now is, um, you know, making sure that the um, web links work uh, and have whatever password or whatever, uh, you know, the new Zoom policies require, um, you know, connected up. So, you know, J Justin, I, I think, uh, you know, including uh, a link to the, you know, web client and, uh, you know, maybe a, uh, a note as to why we recommend uh, the web client, um, you know, will be great. And, um, you know, I'm happy this, this link um, is, uh, you know, the, the, whatever the meeting ID, uh, main meeting, uh, default meeting ID, uh, I believe, um, you know, for, uh, SIG security. So, um, you know, we can test it out at any point. I believe that, you know, it, it'll automatically get recorded and posted to, uh, YouTube, uh, when we do, so, um, there's that. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, Justin, if, if you have uh, time and want to um, test things out, I, I'm happy to, to hop on sometime later this week. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll do that and try to see if we can figure out what the heck is going on with this. Right. Just get you, you know, uh, logged in and uh, uh, figure out, you know, there's some really goofy steps that, you uh, um, you know, I was reading about in, in terms of uh, logging on with the web client where you have to sort of dodge and weave all the attempts that Zoom is trying to get you to uh, shuttle you towards the um, desktop client. Um, but it sounds like it's not that. Uh, that no, in the issue I, right I, now. I, used that. I do all those dodge okay. and weave <laughs> for, all, for all the yeah. meetings. So in this yeah, case, yeah. all the dodge and weaving ends up in an error code 3000. Hmm. Okay, Tom, put the uh -huh. issue issue link, and then I'll put it in the minutes on the running the 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 Zoom in the VM thing. I'll add actually the other week I proposed uh, putting together some images. Um, it doesn't seem too hard to set it up in a Docker container for Linux, uh, even though it's a graphical application Zoom, but then it's a container, so Windows users. Well, I, I think you can use Linux on Windows, but not Windows on Linux, but there's some headaches involved. And then I looked at VM-based approaches and the only Windows VMs that I could find are like these Microsoft Edge ones that expire after 90 days and are more or less meant for Windows web app testing rather than recreating every X days as a instant messaging client thing. So I don't know if it's violating the spirit of the license there. So. The uh, ultimate solution I arrived at was Linux virtual machine and Linux in general without starting a flame war. So if we wanted to prepackage them, that's I think the only medium I'd recommend because the second we have more than one image, why is it Ubuntu? Why isn't it Fedora? Or can you help me debug Prom XYZ? No, no, we're not Zoom support. So I'm happy to still put together a Linux VM image and maybe some, uh, maybe like a vagrant build script to recreate it if anyone thinks there's merit to that like as an interim slash stopgap solution. I'll throw this um, out there. Is it, sorry, go ahead. I just gonna say that um, I think anybody who's, who's gonna want to install it in a VM will probably just want to do their own OS install because it's like once you just do a basic install of a distro with a browser, then, then Zoom will probably just forcibly install that client and do everything for you. Um, I, I think, um, I, I, I don't know. I don't, cause like I would want to do it myself. Um, I, I'm actually already running virtual machines for other things and I sort of don't have enough, uh, memory left to, 
run to yet another virtual machine to just handle Zoom. Um, so like when I have to do that for WebEx, for instance, I have to shut down a bunch of other stuff and it's just a pain in the ass. So I, I really don't want to be in that situation for Zoom if I can avoid it. Now I think of it, I'm probably preaching to a rather elite audience if people are already aware of and concerned about the security implications. <laughs> Chances are they can install VMware travel or something. <laughs> but I thought I'd throw it out there. Uh, would it be just busy work or is there any merit in throwing together like a, maybe the term would be meta assessment, like some sort of short report that says, here's the clients we considered, here's the security, here's the usability, here's the practicality. And if we decide to move away from Zoom, we have that, like, does that need to be formal or clinical? Should we make something like that or just say, no, let's just use tool XYZ, change our YouTube upload scripts and be done with it? No, I, I think there's merit in that. Um, I think I created a while ago that I think someone said that they had put in the chat there talking about looking at alternatives to Zoom. That's exactly what we really should do. Um, and so, you know, anybody just kind of starting to add the things that they've noticed and their thoughts and um, because, you know, I'm also some of the usability things. I'm not as, as certain, like if Google has a way to let you automatically record meetings. Um, but I know that they've recently with with the way they're doing like the new Google meet thing, they're making it a lot more like zoom in terms of security and ease of access and they don't require any um, browser support, I think, or anything other than your your browser. They don't require you to install uh, things unless maybe you do some kind of desktop sharing or something. I don't even know if then if you need to. Um, but you certainly don't need to for a normal call. Um, yeah, but some of the other offerings, you know, they have some pros and cons. And then one other thing is, um, if we're going to do that kind of comparison, are there any things that we have to sort of, for the sake of responsible disclosure, keep a lid on? Like, for example, if I just took a bunch of chat client apps right now and threw LDD and strings and such at it and found a certain library statically linked that should never be statically linked, uh, can we put stuff out there or does that count as irresponsible or premature disclosure? Like, do we have to keep parts of this thing sort of non-public? I'm, I'm actually kind of looking up. Uh, I don't believe that's happened in the past with this group. And um, Dan, you can correct me as far as like, I don't think that's ever been an issue because it's always been known that this meeting is public and available and not necessarily like the place to bring up anything yeah, I see nodding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm not worried about. Uh, um, well, I am worried about disclosure. I think it's an important consideration. But this forum is a public forum, uh, and it should not be considered a um, you know uh, a private forum where uh, you can disclose um, you know any any um, uh, you know security concerns like that. Uh, and would advise anyone who has that uh, to, uh, you know, reach out to uh, any of the, the chairs or, or the tech leads and, uh, you know, schedule an offline uh, conversation. Got it. I recall a topic along those lines popped up last time. Just want to make sure we're done by the book. You bet. Back to you, Justin. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Yeah, All done. All right. Thank you, Justin. All right. On with the next update here. Let's see. Justin. I have one from Mano Velichetti, if I got that correct. Please correct me if I got that out. Yeah, Mano. Yeah. Do you have an right. update there on number 314? Uh, so, uh, no, I, I just I just uh, started scoping it out. I'll update the ticket with more information. But yeah, I've been away for a while. I just want to just talk to everyone quickly. Uh, I traveled out of the country and got stuck and recently came back. But I'll be joining the meet meetings more uh, more frequently. Uh, but yeah, good to be back. Okay, thank you. All right, now I don't believe there are any updates, but we do have a few, I think, uh, new attendees here. So I'll just quickly uh, call out your name 
If uh, you don't want to be called out, you can just ping me or raise hand via chat or just quickly say no update via voice and we'll skip on to the next. So first here I see in my list is Matt Hamilton. Good day, Matt. Hi, uh, I'm Matt Hamilton. I am a uh, principal security researcher at Soluble. Uh, prior to Soluble, I worked at Bishop Fox as a penetration tester specializing in web applications and uh, Kubernetes cluster security. Um, I'm here just to just to watch and see what's going on um, as it relates to this group. I recently disclosed a few issues to the Argo project, and I'm currently working on disclosing issues to another CNCF project. But for now, before I get too involved, I'm just here to watch. Welcome. Thanks for joining Welcome. us. All right, and we have one more new attendee, Chen Ji. Chen Ji. Yeah, this is Chen. Chen. Uh, I at Uber as a full-time software engineer, I mainly work on like uh, the uh, ident uh, the authentication and authorization solutions for internal Uber security. Um, I joined Uber like one year ago. Before that, I worked at VMware. I worked at VMware as an uh, engineer. We provide our Kubernetes as solutions, uh, which which was named as Tanzu Mission Control, um, like. Yeah, I'm kind of like a has a background like a GoLang programming and Kubernetes and authentication. Long, long time ago, I worked at Samsung Smart TV, provided like a system level security arm transfer for the um, on, on, for the uh, Samsung Smart TV. But that is, that's a really long time ago. <laughs> so I'm, I'm joined this uh, uh, group and try to watch and learn uh, how you guys are deal with uh, CNS, CNCF securities. Thank you, Chen. Okay, moving along the discussions here, I believe that covers check-ins and new attendees. Uh, I have this item here that was thrown under presentations, but I believe it may have already been covered by Bolesla. Is that correct? The uh, title was, it's a, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think it was on the... Yeah, I, I think we, we talked about that. Either. Okay, so the, you've already covered a few items that had PRs noted with them, such as 314 and 376, so those are all done. Are there any other PRs that anyone would like to bring up? So, um, Dan, um, I posted the, the issue on the first five. Um, assessments to you to get it. Thanks, Brendan. Um, yeah, I, I went through that. Uh, we get to uh, check off um, Harbor, uh, thankfully. That was great. Um, and, you know, we are perilously close to, uh, you know, pushing uh, past our initial five. Um, yeah, I do feel like we, we, uh, could potentially short circuit this, uh, and, uh, you know, with the proposal in place, um, you know, it's a good time to, you know, advocate for, uh, you know, the introduction of a security assessment, uh, you know, as this is all, uh, changing. So, um, you know, why don't, why don't we add this as, uh, you know, an item of discussion for uh, next week's uh, chair and tech lead meeting. Uh, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk through, um, you know, whether we want to um, push now and, uh, you know, get, get um, security, uh, you know, in front of everybody. Um, you know, I, I, I think we're, we're, we're ready. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that, that sort of thing. Does that work? Yep. That sounds good. Okay. Uh, with but that, then we've covered all, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, um, is anyone that, uh, I saw the, the issue with Parsec. Is there anyone from Parsec that's here or anyone that knows someone from Parsec? I think it could be an interesting presentation for our coming meeting. Don't. Okay, I'll try and the activity them. around it. The big, that'd be fantastic, Brandon. If you could, you know, invite them. Yeah.
Okay, with that. I believe Chase had a, a, a comment uh, that he was trying to, to jump in on. Sure. I was reconsidering making it, so I wasn't, I wasn't pushing it. Um, the gist is, I was unclear if it was on the table for a um, smaller assessment or something slightly a kilter for uh, <clears throat> application for sandbox or whatever versus um, you know pursuing graduation. It so it seems like the advantage of doing the same assessment early and, and late is now you get to compare, um, and maybe the the detriment is that it's a little top heavy slash maybe it's a different audience the assessment the bigger assessment so to speak um i just wasn't sure where that landed i read through the sandbox proposal stuff and it's kind of unclear to me what the whole thing is about but um that's sort of a question sort of a statement everyone's happy with the current security assessment and that's going to be the assessment that applies to sandboxing is that the end state um, no, uh, well, uh, you know, currently that's, that's kind of, uh, you know, the way that that's, you know, uh, the vectors pointed, um, Brandon, uh, is proposing that we, uh, kind of ratchet down the, uh, approval and, uh, assessment team, uh, process with sandbox and, uh, turn that into a bit more of a self-assessment. Um, you know, you, you, you've, you know, gotten a sense of, um, the journey that you'll go through with, uh, assessment partners as you, uh, approach incubation or graduation. Uh, and, you know, we already have an expectation with the assessment that there's an annual renewal. So, you know, that's gonna, you know, what, what, whenever you sort of get on the train, um, you're going to be, you know, kind of in a, in a train workflow. Um, so, uh, you know, the, 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 the Delta that is, uh, you know, kind of in this, in initial discussions on the table is, uh, you know, what if we, we, um, you know, made, uh, the, you know, the sandbox side of things just a little bit, uh, uh, easier, you know, both on our, our side in terms of, uh, you know, level of effort and then, um, you know, it's a, it's a bit more of a, a checkboxing exercise uh, on, you know, the other team side, though, um, you know, I, I think that if you're, you know, you're really, you know, stopping and thinking about it, it might be a little bit more than, you know, just a, a, a check point, a, um, a checkbox, and we'll have to also see, um, you know, once we, uh, you know, put out a proposal to, to do, you know, just you're on your own, um you know how what whether um we actually are able to um you know let folks uh you know work independently and not get pulled into uh you know basically uh you know having to to, to allocate the, the the level of uh time and effort that that we'd have on a, a full assessment for you know one person yeah, and, and I think according to the new proposal, which I don't know when it's going to actually take effect or how many changes are going to be, um, but with the new sandbox proposal, actually six are not involved until the incubation process. Um, so this definitely will, will, will make things simpler, at least for the sandboxing process, for us to not have the requirement and not have that kind of that, that the huge hurdle um, to actually do assessment. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if anyone knows what kind of the timeline of that is, or is it already in effect? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, have, I mean, thoughts on that are essentially, uh, if there's no um, preview, so to speak, then they get pretty far down the line and, and get hit in the face with a 10 ton hammer. That's a, that's a negative. Um, yeah, right. And uh, in another world in my life, we have two sort of assessments. One we call a security preview, um, where the, the P in review is uh, product or process. I don't remember what the three P's are, but anyway, we have a security preview. And then we also have a security readiness review, right? And readiness review is basically we're shooing you out the door 
and you should have pen to paper and code review and all that jazz, whereas a preview could be partially conceptual, you know, there's at least POC, there's, there's it's got legs, but whatever, but we, we kind of treat them, you know, one is more consultative and hey, by the way, you know, once you step into the ring, you're going to take a left jab and a, and a right jab. Um, so it makes sense to me to, to have the two things be related as one, as part of the same continuum, but not the exact same thing. So that's just a thought. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, concluding that, until our hard stop uh, about nine minutes from now, it's an open floor, so anyone's free to chime in. I'll just throw one thing out there, and that was on the uh, facilitator stuff. Uh, um, for now, how about uh, whoever puts their name <laughs> there before, uh, say, uh, Tuesday evening? Um, we'll just go with that, and uh, I'll happily grab it if I can. I'm usually able to reserve this time slot, and if not, I'll be sure to give Dan a heads up the day before, and that should cover our bases in the general sense because yeah if other people want to step up and get to know this and be involved more I don't want to impede new people from also taking a swing at it um you know Matthew r rather than putting in dms uh you know uh, it, it'd be more convenient for me if you dropped it into SIG security that way um you know if I don't happen to see uh, you know, the Slack notification, uh, you know, maybe if, if Brandon's online or, you know, whoever else is, is available to facilitate, um, you know, that individual could, could uh, raise their hand. Is that okay? Gotcha. I'll, uh, oh. I'll default to all this time slot unless there's a major emergency. And other cool. than that, I'll ping to seek security to give it. I'm generally able to set this time slot aside. Yeah, if you could um, uh, open the PR and then um, at least we can try and follow your new guidelines to make sure it's it's consistent. Sure thing. Thank you. And I'll add that to the little uh, updates to the README markdown file on the uh, the roles page. I've been meaning to do that for a while now. I really should get around to that. Does anyone else have any topics they want to bring up in the seven minutes we have left? Okay, looks like that's a wrap. Have a great week, everyone, and stay healthy. Bye. All right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.